Okay, so you've got at least ibrutinib, obinutuzumab, uh, Cal-101. So what's the next frontier? What about large cell lymphoma? What about mantle cell lymphoma? What do you do with these? <laughs> I, you know, there's an embarrassment of riches in CLL right now. We've not talked about ABC199 <laughs> yet. Right. Yeah, we didn't. That's right. So, yeah, before we move on, it actually. It looks like myeloma, but uh, <laughs> you know, a little more complicated. We should talk about um, ABT199 okay. in CLL before we move on. Um, ABT199 is a small molecule BCL2 inhibitor. And, um, you know, BCL2 has been this sort of holy grail target for a long time because BCL2 is overexpressed in so many different lymphoid malignancies, and we know that. BCL2 overexpression sends a signal to these cells that says don't die. And if you could knock BCL2 down, you could make these cells more willing to die. And really the, the idea behind the BCL2 inhibitors was um, it'll probably work well as a one-two punch. You can give this agent, you can lower the cell's apoptotic threshold, and you, you can come in with some sort of cytotoxic chemotherapy and you'll get more bang for your chemotherapy buck, so to speak. But what has been truly amazing is with this newest BCL2 inhibitor called ABT199, the drug has remarkable single agent activity in CLL, SLL. Which was not seen with the prior BCL2 inhibitors. Correct. I recall. Correct. And there was toxicity issues such as thrombocytopenia. This, this is a BH3 mimetic that's more selective um, and you don't see the thrombocytopenia and the activity is much better. And uh, this agent could be in the same ballpark as abrutinib in terms of effectiveness. It's, it's really that good. Um, it's early in development. It's still, still just coming out of phase one. They've just really sort of picked their phase two dose. But the responses that are being seen, response rates in a phase one study of 85% um, and dramatic responses in, in patients with bulky disease who are completely chemotherapy refractory. Um, and so this is a great new drug and what's really exciting is to think about the combinations that, that could be coming down the road. You know, abrutinib plus ABT199, perhaps that'll be a dynamite combination that will just change the whole paradigm of CLL therapy. All right, so then take us to management of, uh, of large cell lymphoma. And sure. because you mentioned BCL2, maybe you could talk about double hit lymphoma. I really want to make it difficult for you. Yeah. Well, I can talk about double hit lymphoma. Unfortunately, we don't have a good strategy for double hit lymphoma right now. I think what's interesting is the biology and um, how double hit lymphoma has been defined historically uh, as if people have a, a chromosomal abnormality detected by fish testing. And if you look for a BCL2 gene rearrangement or a MYC gene rearrangement by fish testing, you could find that in the same cell in a large cell lymphoma patient, maybe five to 10% of the time. So maybe five to 10% of people would be the so-called double hit, uh, meaning MYC is, is deranged and BCL2 is deranged and presumably overexpressed. And, and those patients had a notoriously very, very poor outcome. And what's become apparent in the last 12 to 18 months is that if you look at protein expression rather than just um, genetic alterations, look at look, protein expression by immunohistochemistry because there's now a MYC antibody that appears to be reliable. And you can define a, and now we're using the term double positive. <laughs> okay. to, 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 to clarify, we're doing this by immunohistochemistry a double positive population, and it looks like maybe 25 or 30% of the large cell population are double positive by immunohistochemistry, and they have a dramatically inferior outcome to people who don't have these abnormalities. Now, people just have MYC or just have BCL2, that does not appear to confer this really poor prognosis. It's, it's having both of these things at once. And so if you really, if you think about it, you know, Take the large cell lymphoma population. You know, maybe if you take all comers, with, treat it with our CHOP, maybe we cure 60, 65%. Um, and it appears as though a large fraction of these uncured patients are these double positive patients. I mean, if you take those out and just leave the rest of large cell lymphoma, you're curing the vast, vast majority of those patients. 
and then what's left are these double positive patients, and that's where we really have to make progress in large cell lymphoma. I'm really hopeful that um, ABT199, a selective BCL2 inhibitor, will be a useful agent in large cell lymphoma. Those trials really haven't, haven't begun yet. Trials combining ABT with our CHOP are just getting underway as we speak, but uh, that's a story that, that I'm gonna be really interested in following over the next couple of years. What do you think about our epoch in those patients? Um, I think there's a chance that dose-adjusted R epoch will represent a an incremental improval over R chop, but um, we we at my own institution have been using dose-adjusted epoch for the double hits and now the double positives for a few years, hoping it would be better. And I'll be honest, we're still seeing a lot of patients, most patients relapse. So I'm not sure that's going to be a big difference maker in that population. You know, there were. Um it was rather, from my perspective, disappointing results of the U.S. study on transplant up front for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and, and I have often wondered whether that was um, partly because the uh, case mix was diluted out by all of the people who were not double-hit positive, and uh, whether that's a, a strategy that you Yeah, think I mean, about if, you, if you pick a po patient population that's going to do quite well with your standard therapy, then you have very little chance of showing improvement with whatever you're adding. You know, you've you got to get the patient population right.